Welcome, welcome, welcome to another marvelous episode of CFB Nation, hosted by me, Lever KT, a.k.a. the governor of college football. And, of course, with me today, I got Bob Costas, a.k.a. the mayor of college football, also known as Nino. Nino, you had an epic episode last night, man. How you feeling today? <laughs> I'm feeling good. It's been a hectic day. You know, I just, you know, piggybacked off last night into doing all this combine stuff. We had Dino and Jared just, just flooding us with, you know, content. So it's been a... A marvelous day, as we say here over at uh, CFB Nation. But, you know, we wouldn't want it any other way. Let's get it out there for the people. You know, give them content. Flood them. Uh, make sure you all uh, go over, uh, type into your YouTube search bar. <laughs> the titles. Make sure you go subscribe. Uh, doing a major push for them. Never forget that Toilets the Title is CFB Nation. CFB Nation is Toilets the Titles. So when you see us, we linked. Also, you do the same for us over here. Hit that like, comment, subscribe. We got a lot of interesting content content for everybody content for everybody i feel you know if you're a nebraska fan we got content for you. Oklahoma fan we got content for you just a fan of the sport this is the show for you so we got a lot of interesting content let's get into the show today so of course culture change at at unc we see freddie kitchens got hired over there when we think about freddie kitchens we think about the one-off year that he had in cleveland it, it, it was bizarre. He was their offensive coordinator the year before, mm -hmm. had no head coaching experience, and they hired him. Right. And when they hired him, I don't really think they did their proper research. He was kind of the 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 bridge head coach. We looked at him as if, like, okay, they hired him, they fired him. And, that, and that's been more recent in the NFL. Back in the day, you at least get two years. Yeah. But mo most of the time, you got three years now. You see what Houston has done. Back to back head coaches, David Culley, gone. Lovey Smith, gone. Like, that's just, just what, what the new NFL is. But getting back on topic with Freddie Kitchens, Nino, how do you feel about the hype? So, you, know, you, you mentioned Cleveland. Um, mm. and, and, you know, when the guy in front of you is constantly putting up flaming hot bags of poop on your porch week in and week out, right? And you come up and put a shiny new Hot Wheel on the porch that next morning, hit the bell and run. Ooh, this guy, ooh, I like this, you know? So in this little couple game stretch he had to close out after he was, you know, filling the job, they are like, oh, he looked good. Baker looked good under him. Let's give him a little something. But it was such a small sample size. When the sample size got bigger, it got uglier. Um, I don't know. It's just odd. Like, these coaching changes late, right? Like, he's not really tied to anybody at UNC. And you're literally crossing over state lines. Like, there's bad blood there, right? So, you got no kind of, like, loyalty to, you know you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'll see you later. Sir. Thanks to South Carolina for taking me in when I was I had nothing going. The dudes crossed the line. They're giving me a little bit more money. They got a chance to win more games. I'm going to go over that way. It is what it is. That's the nature of the beast, I guess, right? But I, you're just odd to see it late and to be, you know, over state borders. But, like... You know, like I was saying before to you uh, in the green room, or uh, first take Timmy, as you might want to call it, you know, just refreshing ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he served in South Carolina as a as an off-field role, right? But they leaned on his experience late in the season when they kind of booted some guys out, had to make some changes. They kind of leaned on him a little bit more. But due to on-field coaching roles, he wasn't permitted to do any of that due to, like, you know, the bylaws, the NCAA rules mm -hmm. regarding analysts, you know, because he was like, you know, a run game analyst, you know, offensive analyst Same for them thing on the staff. Mike Bobo, I believe Garrett Patterson was also an analyst this year. It's more like a sabbatical. Yes, you're a part yeah. of the team. You, you do help people, do trust your mind, but it's, 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 it's weird. Yeah, you can't, you're not, you're not going to be on the field. You're not, not going to really be in the box. You know, you're not going to be in the, with them dudes. So, like, mm -hmm. uh, but your input. It's, it's prep work. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and like I said, he brings, uh, you know, one year as a head coach, but he's got, you know, 15 other years as coordinators or mm -hmm. an assistant somehow, some way in the NFL. That that matters, right? Um, and he's been linked to, to the GOAT. So, you know, in 2000, he was a grad assistant at LSU with Saban. Um, obviously, Saban wasn't the dude at the time, but anytime you can kind of learn a little bit from from the GOAT, you know, it, it, it helps. You get yourself clipped on a branch on the on the Saban tree, I guess, right? Um, but he's going to be the tight end coach and the run game assistant. So we'll see what it is. I mean, I like Nesbitt over at UNC, so I want to see what Freddie Kitchens can do for Nesbitt because I think Nesbitt can be a, you know, probably a top, top 10 tight end this year if he can, you know, just take that next step. I think 
you mentioned a great point. You you mentioned Nesbit. You know how can Freddie Kitchens directly impact him? And if we want to talk about that, then we got to talk about Chip Lindsey and kind of what is he going to bring to Drake May in this UNC offense this year. You know we know about his time with uh, Gus Malzahn. Uh, a lot of people forget about his time in Southern Miss when when he was with Todd Munkin, who is now in the NFL. I feel like we talked about Todd Munkin the last <laughs> year, so somehow. Seven, six degrees of separation yeah, right, with Todd right. Munkin. Really it, really, it really is. Uh, but when you, when you think about it, like how can Freddie Kitchens greatly impact Chip Lindsey? What will this offense look like this year? Every – year in college football you hear teams be like okay we want to be more balanced you look at teams that win national championships are about are balanced it may not yeah, always yeah, be 50 be. 50 maybe you know in the ballpark 47 yeah, somewhere in the yeah, ballpark yeah. though it's not completely one dimensional so i think that's the key for freddie kitchens being both the run game coordinator and the tight end coach. And I think those positions kind of go hand in hand because tight ends not only have to be able to catch the rock, they also got to be able to yeah, affect set set the, the block, yeah, for the, the lane, the, I, the, the run game as well. So now, how do you? How do you, I was about to say like, yeah, go, like, like, how, how are you truly feeling about this? Like, you know, we we all know about the debacle, but you know, long term, how can it work? How can this work out for him? Because I believe college football is the land of second chances and third chances. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like th- this is a place where he can work on who he is and kind of fly up the realms again. This is – listen, when you're in the NFL and you come back to college, it is a calculated move, okay? Oh, yeah. You went from South Carolina where at the end of it, Rattler looked nice, right? Yeah, Everything on that yeah, offense yeah. looked spicy to close out the last six games. So you took that high note when you took that, and you went and cashed that check, and you went to UNC, right? You got Drake May. You got a couple pieces there. You know, run, you got two two guys in the backfield that run rock that are pretty good, you know, Petaway and Hampton. Um, and then you got Nesbitt at the tight end position. You got that young dude at wide receiver coming in to replace Josh Downs. So they, they have guys. Um, he's going to bring his talent and what he's done there. Have I off my my memory serves me correctly? I'm more locked in now to college football, you know, like I said. But I'm pretty sure when he was there and he replaced uh, <laughs> the gentleman in front of him, the tight end um, game was David and Joku and yeah. Harrison Bryant. I'm pretty sure the year he was there, Harrison Bryant had a had a season like not Pro Bowl season. But I want to say he might act like close to like up to 30 catches, close to 40 mm-hmm. catches. You know, so it seems like he can get the best out of his tight ends, right? Nesbitt's already done well. Um, without a glorified tight end coach, um, so I'm I'm fifty fifty, but I think with the talent level that he's got, I, I think he can. Uh, I think it's good for both both ends. Yeah, this wouldn't surprise me. I don't believe this is a long term move. One and you're done. Is is one and done or promotion? You know, if he you know somehow gets a promotion. Um, I don't see how, cause you know he ain't taking OC role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I just don't. I agree with you. I don't see that happening. So let's get into this next topic, shall we? Rule Head scratches. <laughs> uh, Nina, you want to go over the rule changes for the people, man? I, I am not excited about this topic. I, I, I'm excited so, to discuss it, but I'm not excited about some of these rule changes. Before we get into it, right? I, I, I happen to catch my guys over at Crane and Company. They were talking about this, right? Mm-hmm. And they brought on who else but the GOAT, Late Kick Josh, right? Wow. <laughs> and they said to Late Kick, shout like, out, shout out Late Kick. Yeah, the people that run college football, this is what my boy Jay Crane said. The people that love college football, I mean, that run college football, do not love college football anymore. Damn. And Late Kick Josh kind of like uh, agreed with that in a, in a roundabout way, in a way he, he expresses That's himself. Deep. Bro. But I, I might have to start to think that, like, other than what is the reason for this? Because we've spoken in the green room that this is a, a money grab, right? Like, I don't oh, really I'm, make I'm any sense to me. 100% money I grab. don't understand it. The first two off this four, four possible rule changes, right? The mm-hmm. first one is prohibiting consecutive timeouts. There's no back to back timeouts. You can't come out of a timeout and call another timeout. I like that rule. I don't mind that rule. Head scratcher for me. Mm hmm. My timeouts, money bags. Yeah. They, so why would they? Why would they be against the back-to-back timeout? Uh, I'm not. 
I'm I'm not sure other than yes, it's a money grab, but it still slows down the time. Now I'm I didn't I really want to div- speed the game up. Yeah, I didn't we divulge into it. Do. So like, is it back to back times, back to back timeouts on the same team? Or if I call a timeout to ice you, right? Mm-hmm. And now I'm kicking the field goal and I don't feel good. I can't call a timeout because it's back to back now. I I think both instances would be true. I Oof, think not that's only rough. is it. You know, that's rough. You calling a back to back timeout for your team, but oh, also oh. if I call a timeout, you can't call another one. Okay. F- fact, don't they have that rule in the NFL? Is that a rule in the NFL? No, because they're doing field goals all the time. Now, I used to do it, and then like, uh, he'll come you're out right, and be like, right, oh, it don't look good, so we're going to call a timeout. We're going back to commercial. Which is why I say like timeouts back to back are money grab. So it's kind of confusing. This next one, bro, I stared at it, I read it. Like as if I was doing it backwards, playing a record backwards. I just couldn't con like I couldn't grasp the concept of what it even meant or why someone got paid to come up with this cockamamie rule and say, you know what, this is we're just gonna slide this in. This is like a government dock, right? We yeah. got the main thing we're gonna put in there and we're gonna just stuff it with minutia. Yeah. And and half the stuff don't make no sense. People aren't gonna read it, we're just gonna put it in there, and then the next year be like, What what happened with that play? Where, where did that come from? That's like, a small print. Yeah, no longer extending a first or third down for an untimed down if the quarter ends on a defensive penalty, the down continues to the next quarter. So if I chuck a ball into the end zone when the time's expiring and it's pass interference, why do I have to start the next quarter on on the refresh down? Why wouldn't I get to re, like replay the, the, the down? It didn't happen. It's a penalty. That didn't happen. It don't make no sense. Explain that one to me, please, Katie. I know it's probably dumbfounding to you, but explain it to me like I'm five because I don't get it. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it either. But I think it's just one of those things where they're trying to speed up the game. Now this wouldn't uh, happen in the fourth quarter, correct? If I'm not mistaken. No, it's yeah. It's the first three quarters. It's the first three quarters. Just another way to speed. Oh, the game. This is this is all this is. I don't get it though. It just doesn't make any but, sense. <laughs> but we talked about this in what October, November. I think it was that, late late October. Yeah. That college football is on all of these networks. Mm-hmm. Like college football is the plug that keeps on. <laughs> you, Apple coming in the bag now. Man, you get a break. You yeah. get a break. It's Oprah, you Oprah break. out there, hand it, hand it out, hand it out. Gives it to everybody. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But they don't get it back, but yeah, they, they, at all. So I, don't know. I think wh- whoever said that Ukrainian company is a genius because it's something I never thought about at all. Because we love we love this game. I love it. We let I, I don't watch the NBA anymore. No, nope. I don't watch the <laughs> NFL unless it's the Buffalo Bills. I ESPN. used to love college basketball. I don't even watch college basketball. I am all in. Like if I had all my chips on the table, Push all my them. eggs on the table, <clears throat> there you go. It's it's with this <laughs> it's this this right here. Because, yes, it's a lot of politics, but I feel in my heart of hearts this thing is not tainted. They want this thing to be pure. But the people that run it, do they love this game the way we love this game? Do they, don't, or is it I, just a money grab for them? I think like, they used to, but I think it was daddy's daddy. Dad. Like, like great, great grandpa, they mm-hmm. love this game like we mm-hmm. love this game. And then as the years have gone on, things change, and it wasn't as – Meaningful to the next generation, and then the next so? generation. You think the you think it's like the optimism died, like how? Okay, I look at marriage as you know, you know, finding finding the one for you, whether that's you know true love, the companionship, all all of that. Some people look at it as a business agreement. Yeah, both things are are true, but yeah, you know, some people look at it as this is only a business agreement. Well, this is only love without looking at the business well, agreement. Like, you know what changes? You know what changes what, what, the business changed? agreement? It's mm-hmm. it's three words, but then mm-hmm. I, I love you. It's mm-hmm. name, image, and likeness. That changes everything. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> Nino I'm Costas back. Is in, a, is in the building. <laughs> I'm back. That is that is crazy, man. So let's 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 talk about this next rule change. Uh, the next one. Um, the clock continues to run after the offense gains the first down, except inside of two minutes. I... I've always loved college football because of that rule. 
with the clock stopping. I'm a gamer at heart. You know, college football, NCAA 06, my favorite video game ever. <laughs> and the second one is NCAA 14. So, you know, I've always loved that rule. But could that rule be Oh, hold up. Time out. Time out. Are both of those Michigan covers? That's Howard and, and, and uh, Shoeless, right? Bro, you're right. It's it's uh it's Howard and um Shoeless and, uh, um, uh, Robinson. Uh, Robinson Robinson yeah. yeah 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 that's crazy I didn't even think about that bro so, and I didn't even cut, cut that that's why Desmond Howard in the front of this thing with yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy bro wow um but it, sorry anyway, to like sorry I said, to throw it out no, there no, just... no, you you, no, you just threw you just threw me for a loop now I want to talk about Walter Cross <laughs> that grew up in my neighborhood <laughs> and played in Michigan. you just uh, see. You just, Six you are, you're a classic Michigan fan. <laughs> I know, right? Maybe I got to do a Michigan show. But, uh, oh! We'll, we'll, oh. See, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see <laughs> what we can make shape. But, um, so I, I've always liked that rule. But this, I think, out of all of the rules, is one that I make and get behind. Yeah. It's, it's like that right now, right, in the NFL, mm. right? There's no stoppage of the I clock unless you pound it. Where what hurt us at is in those competitive rivalry games inside of a given division or a conference where it would help at is when Oklahoma's playing FCS whoever, I was about to say no today Marshall the crap, yeah, yeah, beating yeah. the dog crap out of them and it's just like okay let's get through this game this game is taking way too long so yeah. Yeah. Um, you know the the NFL you know switches games they don't really do that in college football right <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. so yeah. I, I, I think that's a rule I can get behind I, I, of all of all four of them, that's that's yeah, the one I'm yeah, kind of like. All right, that one worked. This next one, the last one is the clock will run after incomplete pass once that's the ball stupid. is spotted. That is stupid. It's incomplete. Why are you <laughs> running the like, like? I don't understand. So wait a minute. I'm gonna throw the ball out of bounds, right? It's out of bounds. No, and the clock still runs once he puts it on the ground. Like, get, hey, can you get me that dude's card because I need his his guy, and I want to know what he's chiefing on. <laughs> because that dude got the good good when they come up with this stuff. Like, I just don't understand. They put these dudes in the room. They give them a bag. They say, here, when you're done with this, I need a list of crazy things that we can throw on the stock. I'm going to take the wildest one you come up with. All right? I got you, dog. I think, we- I think the most important thing in any business, and I know there's a lot of cl- cliche words, and a lot of people agree with me, but I think, I think the most important thing is optimization. I think they looked at this game, but like we have a great game, but how can we optimize this? How can instead of it being a three minute and ten game, a uh, three hour and ten minute game, how can we get this at two thirty, two forty five? And I think, but it's not baseball, right? Special is it's, it's not, it's not. I, I just don't. It? The fans are gonna watch a three hour game, or the fans are gonna watch a two hour and fifteen minute mm-hmm. game. Like we're gonna watch what's, the game regardless of how long it is. Your, correct? What's your, what's your favorite type of food, Nino? You know? Italian food? You like like Italian food, right? Yeah. So, you know, have you have you been you know, in Italy oh, to eat? Wait, 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 real wait. No, no, no. Authentic... But if I'm going to Italy to get authentic food and it uh-huh. takes an hour for me to get it mm-hmm. and and I'm in Italy with the atmosphere, I mm-hmm. don't care because I know what I'm getting is A1. Uh-huh. But if I'm going to Olive Garden, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 25 minutes. Mm-hmm better be on the plate because right right right, right, <laughs> right, but, right. No, and i'm not knocking it's not division two right mm. we're not trying to uh, if it was division two or maybe even fcs and you're trying to force this right because mm. you're trying to squiddle it down so you can pump it out to get the most return on your dollar i get it whether the game's three hours or two hours and 30 minutes or three hours and 30 mm. you are getting enough commercial time enough sponsorship you making money bro like I don't understand unless you got people that are managing your your bag right. And now you need to dumb it down so that you can squeeze it in the right amount to get the most amount of games on TV. Mm-hmm. If you're trying to tell me you're going to get four games on TV every Saturday instead of three because you're going to get it to two hours and 15 minutes, well, now the light bulb goes off because that means that somebody ain't managing the books right. right, right so this right, is a way to fix right. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I, I... I feel like it's a it's it's an optimization thing. Um, 
why go this route i think part of the reason is it's like when you have to have you know a lot of money you may not value stuff the same way a person with a little bit of money values in the nfl you may have eight to ten teams annually and I, and I might be generous maybe six to ten teams annually that you can put on national tv no matter if it's week one week five week 10 week 16 they are going to bring in ratings and yeah. you'll see that you know via the nielsen ratings right college football there's a plethora of teams like i feel like you have so much good things in college football that it's just like crane company said man this this thing is Tainted by people that don't love the sport. They're, they're funny sport. too, right? They learn from mm-hmm. like the government. Like the government wants oh, yeah. to do something, oh, yeah. they put something else out there for you to look at, then they go and mm-hmm. do something, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So oh, what do oh, they do? Oh, you, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, because oh, I tell man. me, so I'm like, I'm like, what's really going on? And they yeah. hate, they hate yeah. that. Response they flash Kardashians or hey, they'll flash some scandal. It. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then they're doing some, they're doing their thing. This is what uh, they did, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to put this out there right around the time of the combine, right mm-hmm. around the time that teams are just merging to, to different conferences. Ah. So that's the news. And, man, yeah. nobody going to say nothing. We're going to take heat for like a day, and then we out. Gucci. Yeah. Bro, Nino. <laughs> Nino. Hey, man. That, I got hey, you. <laughs> hey, somebody need to get this man a job. Listen. <laughs> My phone I'm, number. I'm, 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 I'm going to look at the camera, man. Get this man a job, bro. Y- y'all seen what he do. Seriously. Get his man a job, bro. That's crazy, Nino. That's crazy. I, I don't even know if you just realized what you said. <laughs> it's the way of the world, bro. It's the way yeah. it's been. I'm just opening some eyeballs. That's right. all. I'll give, right. you the, I'll give you the toothpicks. Picking them open a little bit. This is almost like Christmas for, like, the 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 people who are true to the Fans. film, who, like, yeah. love this time of the year, you know, invest the time learning these new incoming recruits. Learning next year's recruits, mm-hmm. you know, with the combine coming up, you know, the, the hyperbole talk to see, you know, people like you proving right when everybody was trying to prove you wrong when Will Levis does what he does at the combine. And I seen some of that earlier. I'm like, I'm going to wait because I almost <laughs> said something to somebody earlier because I seen somebody was bothering you about Will Levis. I'm I'm gonna wait. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and that that was not an inside jab at, at, at homeboy that, that commented, okay? Uh, like, because mm-hmm. I, I, I had seen it multiple places besides. I didn't even realize that he had he had posted something, right? He had uh, put, put a TikTok up or whatever, and he's mm-hmm. and I respect the gentleman. I think it's this something Jagger. Uh, yeah, I respect yeah. him. His content's you, you a one. Exactly who I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, no, his content's a one, and, and uh, it wasn't a jab at nobody. But I've seen it other places. I've also seen it on YouTube where people kind of like throw it out there, like, oh, you know, he started off with the wrong foot. He could have beat out Sean Kiffin. Like, not every time that you don't win the role, is it your fault? So they I know that. a dude that's connected into the whole situation. I spoke to you about. It. I know a guy, okay, who was there who told me. That multiple people told Will Levis's parents get him out of that school. Nino, let's let let's let's be frank. And, and before I, I, be I want to be John. You you want to be John? Let's <laughs> be John. <laughs> before I say what I say, God bless the dead. This is just a true comparison. So, what if Joe Barrow got left in Ohio State when Haskins beat him up? No, nobody talks about that though, right? Right, but they try to claim him. They right, still try right, to claim. Right, they try right, to claim right. Joey. They try to claim him. <laughs> He's the Ohio kid, still went number one. Yeah. So you, everybody talking about this Sean Clifford talk. Styles make fights. We've been telling you that on this show for years. Sean Clifford might just been a better quarterback for that system and the system that they wanted to run. But this well, Sean Clifford's father or mother could have gave a little bit more money to the program. Hey, we just told you why all these rules change. <laughs> Money talks. <laughs> well, Chris Tucker, when we need him, happy. yeah. Let's get, to, let's get to this next topic. We got special guests covered in five minutes. Yeah, we'll get. We'll run it down quick. I, I got so, you. So these top linebackers, you know, you go ahead and give us the players, and I'll give you my top three out of the players you talk about. All right. So um, I'm just gonna go, and then I'm not gonna name an order. I'm just gonna spout them out, and you can tell me what you think. Okay. Okay. And then you give me your top three. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. start out with uh, Santeri. Perkins, 6'3", 205 pounds, five-star. Linebacker, he committed to Ole Miss. Athletic enough to probably play wide receiver or running back at a power five school mm-hmm. level. Like, that's the talent. But, you know, he, he's better smash people this, this one, the gap. Year one, this is all he going to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is all he going to do. He going to eat. Yeah. I seen yep. Derek Harvey in 2004. Derek Harvey was probably 6'4", 6'5", 
in our summer. This all yeah. Chinese food and lift. Bro, that's it. That's it. Rice, white rice, baby. I mean, <laughs> just go to work, bro. Go to work. You know, he he, he going he gonna probably put on twenty five pounds just in mm. this this spring you know, alone. Matter, but matter, matter of fact, I gotta see if we can get him on this show. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But he he can he, his future is obviously on his second level defender on the other side of the yeah. ball, right? Yeah, his ability absolutely. to shoot the gap in literally the snap of a finger mm. is off the charts. It's elite. Um. Next gentleman up is Raylan Wilson, 6'2", 213 pounds, another five-star. He committed to Georgia. He's excellent in chase mode. Uh, he can get around the outside hashes, hawk down the ball carriers on all different you know, all different sizes. Um, his instincts in the box is run defender is, is quick. It reads and reacts. And my man is a straight freak athlete. Um, Georgia just finds these guys. There's another gentleman on here that's going to Georgia, too. Uh, you know, it's just it's wild how the defense just, you know, the rich get richer. And that's mm-hmm. what they say. Um Next gentleman up on the block is going to be, I'm going to mess his name up, but I'm going to try my best. It's Tassili Akara, 6'4", 225 pounds, four-star, committed to Texas. This plays good athletic ability in a five technique. He's a base 3-4 defense uh, while showing ability to play in a two-point stance, you know, situationally. He's got good knee bend, hip flexibility in and out of the stance. Uh, he flashes some twitch explosion, if nothing crazy, but his first step off the line of scrimmage is pretty good. So um, he's a guy to look out for. Then we got C.J. Allen, 6'1", 217 pounds, four-star committed to Georgia Bulldogs. Rich get richer. Uh, highly productive, um, considered full two-way player, but uh, you know, he ran for 1,000 yards, almost 10 yards per carry, 91 tackles as a junior in high school. Prototypical size, modern off-the-ball linebacker, you know, that 6'1", 215, 220 build. Uh, he's probably going to be like 235 after the spring. He just mm. that's the way it works. Yeah. Uh, he closes with a purpose he anticipates with straight conviction. He's, you know, snot bubbles, man. He's that dude in the back of his head that's all he's saying is snot bubbles. I'm going to hit him until I see snot bubbles. He's physical <laughs> with the run, and he's got that straight line, that straight line swag, that juice to provide, you know, that blitz ability. So the last guy I got up in here, that's Anthony Hill, 6'2", 225 pounds, five star. He's going to Texas. He's a thumper against the run. He can chase down people from the back. Like, he got speed, athleticism. Uh, he's physical, violent off the ball linebacker who, who occasionally steps to the line of scrimmage and, and, and you know, he got on the edge. So those are my five guys. What do you got? What's your top three? Uh, so coming in at one is Raylan Wilson. Okay. This dude is amazing. I've seen him run back multiple punts. For oh, yeah. Runs. I've seen him run a kickoff back for a touchdown. Um, he's a clean tackler. He doesn't get fooled by misdirection. He trusts his eyes, which is really hard to do at, at that level. I like um, that. I'm not sure if he's gained weight because I've seen two different weights um, between, I know, I think, at one site had him at like 213 or something like that. I, think had, right, like, I got I him at 213. I think I think he's like 220. I mean, he's probably 220. Yeah, right around yeah, that he's, now. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's 225 now, but. And really, I think out of all of these backers, Anthony Hill is violent, bro. He he's, he's not, he gives he's me Ivan right. Pace vibes. Like he just he's smashes right. people. He's not right now. Yeah, head. yeah. It's uh, not bubbles, man. <laughs> but I do think he's going to end up playing on the edge. You think so? Think is he kind of going to get him out there? I, I he's got to get a little too, more weight on him though for, he, to play he, on the outside, so he doesn't he did, not not man. enough to lose the speed. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But enough weight where like. You can't be going against, you know, 300-pound offensive linemen and they right. just aduking you around, bro. Like, you know, not today, sir. I think what will help his case, like you said, if he's able to gain weight, he, one, he'll be good against the run. Yeah. Uh, naturally. Uh, but two, um, like I said, just seeing him at linebacker, he's so violent. I don't like his technique sometimes, if I'm being uh, honest. But no, when you're uh, that good. In, in high school and you're able just to ah, mm-hmm. just hit somebody, like, yeah. you know. It's different, but like I you said. You got to be on I a swivel think, around Hill. got to be. I, I do like the kid, but I think he's going to end up playing on the edge. And it may not be year one or year two, but I think at some point he's going to make that move. To, uh, that's what the money is. I want to see where your third is. Who's your, who's your number three? Uh, Number three is Perkins, man. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Like he's, these linebackers, I don't know if it's the high schools, you know, we went to at the time that we were in high school, but these linebackers can do it. Oh, they're not just linebackers anymore. Of course, you would see like the linebackers. So I'm linebacker. old. I'm old. You know what I mean. So when I was in school, no, no, that's what I'm saying. It's different. When I was in high school, you know, this was in like you know the late '90s. Uh-huh. We wanted shifty dudes 
that could, you know, get in and out between the hashes quick and to the outside, right? We didn't want that. We didn't really see many 6'2", 6'3", 200-pound dudes that were coming out the hole. You know what I mean? Like, nowadays, I I like it because the vision's there, right? Mm. You're a linebacker. You played running back. It's a whole different ball game. Like, you and Mike wear it pretty soon because you're a green dot dude because you got that vision. You anticipate the run. You can see the hole open. You know what I mean? So, it's different. I like it. All right, so give me your 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 top five in order, and then we'll go ahead and bring on these special guests. All right, my top five. At one, I got Hill. Um, mm. I my concern is will it, will he go will he go from a Nolan Smith to a Jalen Carter? Ah. Like that 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 role. You, you know what I mean? Will mm. he be able to to put the, the weight on and mm. and and keep the speed? Or if he puts the weight on and loses the speed, then he's definitely staying at mm-hmm. on you know at linebacker, and he's just going to just destroy people and, and running backs come out the back. So that that's my 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 only concern with him. Other than that, he's got all the tools at, at linebacker. Um, I got Perkins at two. I know you like Wilson. I just the athleticism, the fact that he could probably be a running back at, at a P five school, is stupid. You think um, he's more athletic than Wilson? I think he is a little more athletic than Wilson. Mm-hmm. I honestly do. I mean, I know Wilson's a freak athlete. Like overall athlete, I think Perkins is a better athlete on the football field. Let me let me that's clarify that. You you know what I'm saying? Like that's with the ball in his hand, that's a good yeah, or, or chasing the ball on a football mm-hmm. field, I think his his IQ and everything is, is a little bit better. Athletic. You think his IQ is better? Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that. I, I think agree with that. I, I I was with you until you said that. I don't he got that. IQ from both sides of the ball, though. I okay okay that that's fair. Watching Wilson out of all the linebackers that I watch, his anticipation is, is incredible. Dude, Wilson. he doesn't get yeah. faked out. Like, no, he literally, you know, it can, it's all but the bells and whistles in high school. It's high school. school. It's high school, and you're it's right. college. Okay, yeah, you're right. And you're I'm right. not. To, I I hate always going back to this gentleman, so I'll, I'll pick a different guy, mm. Dorian Williams. So I love it at Tulane, right? Mm. Coming out of high school, right? He was that dude, big, mm. big body guy. You know what I mean? It's laying a wood, got a high football IQ. Came to Tulane, took him a little bit, got it together. But there's still plays where we look at him like he's overshawn. Like, what yeah. are you doing, bro? Right. Why are you right. getting tangled up in the minutia? Mm-hmm. Wilson kind of gets tangled up in the minutia where he likes to flex. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He got the I three quarter. He got the three quarter shirt on. He's kind of mm-hmm. fighting this guy in the corner that's got like thirty pounds on his shirt. Like, I got, I'm bigger than you, even though you got more weight. Mm-hmm. Where Perkins don't need to do any of that, bro. He just. His, his play says enough for him. You know what I mean? Like, he, you get him on this one, he's going to get you on the next six. So, that, that's I, I, the way he looks I think at that's it. that's fair. I just think that UGA defensively. Yeah, they're not stupid. They're the not. Yeah, they're not dumb. Yeah. But don't, don't, don't sleep on Akara, all right? Mm. I think if anybody could move to the edge, it's Akara. 6'4", mm. 225. I think right now he's like 232, 233. Um, that was at the end of his senior year. Bro, you put he's, another... probably, he's probably getting some. We we talk about it, man. Try, he could grow two inches. Weights, yeah, you could grow two inches by tomorrow, yeah. right? He's six six two fifty, bro. He's mm-hmm. going to the edge. So, that 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 that's that's the way I round it out. But yeah, um, for me, the, my my top guy's Hill. I just the attributes, everything, and the violence that he plays in. Yeah, it's just yeah, he 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 plays like them linebackers played like when we growing up. He he's not wired right. <laughs> nah, <laughs> like, nah, there's a there's a twitch in there somewhere. You see on the sidelines, yeah. like he. Like he's bored, like, like he John Randall, baseball. like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, what I mean? yeah, give me the yeah. eye paint. I'm I'm out to kill. <laughs> Man, bro was ready. All right, looks like our our special guest is just getting ready. Nino, man, go ahead and get these fellas a grand introduction. I'm gonna go ahead and fire him in now. So you know, it's a T two T C F uh, B Nation. Both of these gentlemen are on, on both teams. They're out there in Indianapolis. Uh, they're just doing the combine hey, thing. Hey, we don't we don't swing both teams. <laughs> I, I apologize. That was probably the wrong way to introduce you guys, especially when you're sitting hey, on yo. the couch together. You know what I mean? <laughs> I apologize. Gentlemen, how are we doing? I appreciate the hard work. We're good. We're good. Sorry, we just adjusting. Nice. We're nice. good. Uh, you know, at the at NFL Combine, we've been busy. Um, got in about, I think I got in like 1 o'clock last night. You know, got in. Taking care of stuff, slept into like seven o'clock, which isn't normal for me if <laughs> if you know me at all. Um, but then we got up, got rolling. Well, obviously, we've been pumping content all day, and it's been a good day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, no, don't lie. You, you, I, I got the inside information. You took a nap. 
I did, 100%. <laughs> and then some. So. I it love it. And then so. Dino, how we doing, my man? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's been a uh, been a crazy day. A lot of uh, a lot of information thrown out there that some people may not like, but shocking. <laughs> like, I like the shirt you got on. Represent, of course, right? man. Nice. My man, KT. Uh, you want to ask him something before we get into like you know the whole situation? Yeah, so, so what was the experience like walking into the building, seeing some of the who's who of the NFL? What was the like biggest shock value for you guys on day one? The building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's literally two blocks long. Yeah. Like there was a whole nother convention going on that you never saw anyone unless you were walking around from. It's, wow. It was con this convention center is literally, and I am not by any means lying here. It is two blocks long by two blocks. <laughs> It's That's a two by two block. I mean, they've got five hundred rooms, you know, in this place. What? It's it's massive. Huge. It's it's the biggest convention center. It's got to be the biggest convention center I've ever been a part of or seen in my life. So wow, wow, love it, love it. All right, I got I got I got a couple of questions that we wanted to ask you. Just you know, just three real quick before we send you off. I know you guys are busy. You want to get some sleep? Um. Oh no, we're good. Now we're good. Yeah, we now. What is what is the biggest question? That you heard day one? Uh, I think for me, you know, I think we're, we're going to both agree on this. You know, we talked about, you know, somebody brought up the Tua situation and, you know, how, how does, you know, Coach McDaniel feel about it? And I wish I was recording at the time, but I was in so much shock I, had, I didn't push record. <laughs> He's very uncommitted to Tua. Yeah. The, oh. the, the, the coach, the staff, everybody, they're like, you know, we, we really brought in the pieces to make him better and, you know, get the best that we can out of the, out of the player. And what we, what didn't happen is we have to deal with injuries and we don't know if, you know, if he's the right fit, you know, for us, we, we see that, you know, players, you know, Skylar Thompson definitely needs to be in the conversation for, for true playing time. And I mean, me and, you know, Dean and I were sitting there just talking to each other like, is this real life right now? <laughs> because, I, I mean, I was in so, so much shock. And you know what I mean, Dan, he's, he's hilarious in front of the mic. And obviously we've got some clips and yeah. we're talking about tampering. And so props to him on that that, that he can joke about it. Yeah. But I think I was just so dumbfounded the fact that they were very uncommitted. Honestly, they're uncommitted to almost everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, the Byron Jones issue was brought up, and he was like, yeah, you know, he's in here working, uh, but I don't tweet much. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe he shouldn't either. So, oh, man. I was like, man. You know, oh. so I, McDaniels did not mess around in that aspect. And, I, you know, give him props. Uh, the coolest experience was the fact that the first person to talk to today was Sean Payton. Love so he gets off the plane. He's wearing freaking gray sweatpants and <laughs> gray sweatpants and New Balance and New Balances. And I didn't even check the New Balances until Dennis said something. He's like, "Hey, look at the New Balance." It's like this straight grandpa mode over what here. What are those? <laughs> yeah. So, but he talked for thirty plus minutes, yeah. and it's only a fifteen minute window. So oh. for him to get thirty, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, a yeah. lot to say, right? And there's been a lot of buzz going on about it. Yeah. Um. He's excited about certain things, and obviously, like he brought up the dinner with Joe, you know, with his quarterback <laughs> and Joe Montana and stuff like that, and just said, you know, good things to be honest. With, which you know, there wasn't all good things said there, but all right, all right. I got, I got uh, KT. You want to take the next one? Or you want me to keep rapid firing him? Uh, uh, you can rapid fire him. The tour thing bothers me though, because we've uh -oh. seen all the build up that they did coming into the season. Oh, two is this Tyreek Hill's like, you know, he might be more accurate than Patty Mahomes. He didn't say that, but he kind of he kind of swayed yeah. in that direction. And as far as what does he mean? So for them to be non committal now. It just doesn't make sense to me. So, did they truly believe that coming into the season, or were they just saying that to buy time? That, I guess that's where my confusion lies. You know, something that uh, Dennis had brought up is how his coach brought was talking about how they got good, you know, stuff from 
both their backup quarterbacks and Sal Thompson and Teddy Bridgewater. Right. If they can see how the guys that, you know, aren't, you know, a claim to the system and stuff like that, if they can get production out of guys like that, why are they going to pay $23 million to the other guy on May 1st? Yeah. yeah. It makes Since sense. You up Skyler's name, you knew it was kind of like, okay, you can kind of see how he felt actually about Tua. So th- that shocked a lot of people that were there. Yeah. I mean, we everybody was looking at each other, you know, you know, Matthew Barry sitting right next to us, and he's just like, I, just, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I mean, the guy, the, it, McDaniels did not hold back. And, and, you know, obviously everybody wants to say the right thing and whatever. It was more of like, I don't care what you guys are going to say after this because this is how I f- really feel. Yeah. And it was, a, you talk about 45 people just sitting there looking at each other like, um, do you hate your quarterback? Or, <laughs> like, and, and then, you know, somebody tried to be nice and like, hey, you know, what, what's up with, you know, your thing you're bringing in? He's like, well, you know, it's jujitsu. But, um, you know, there's some other things that were brought up that he could work on. You know, but we're not going to talk about that. I don't know if I can actually say that here, but uh, we're, jujitsu, that's 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 all we're, we're going to talk about. And I was like, wow. And that's the only thing he talked good about to about Tua is he was willing to do this. Besides that, I mean, he was coming at him, dude. I mean, he it was, was loaded. He had the gun in the chamber loaded, huh? But Dennis got a really good one beginning of the day uh, from Josh McDaniels, and I think this has to be said. Oh, yeah, how he said he needs uh, toughness and uh, – what was it? What was the other one? Like gritty, tough quarterback. Yeah, gritty, tough quarterback, and you knew it instantly that it was a shot at Carr. Yeah, it was like I, we need a, a tough, gritty quarterback, you know, in Vegas. You know, and you're like, bro, you, you're saying you do was softer. <laughs> like, you know, you – I mean, he came hard at him. I mean, and right. it was one of the first three questions oh, yeah. asked. So, well, you know, he's been coming at the organization, right? He was in the Pro Bowl. That's why I'm going for a new team, right? So, like, yo, you got to expect someone to step up. And, yeah, he's and here. Back. So, I mean, we're going to find out a little bit of stuff like that. If we can actually get a hold of him, we'll do that. So. He's, uh, wanted, he's meeting with the Panthers pass. tomorrow. Yeah, meeting with the Panthers tomorrow. So, that's, that's tasteless, though. I can't yeah. respect that. Third yeah. card, you know. So, Love him or hate him, he gave that organization, you know, plenty of years at the helm. That's that's tasteless in my opinion. I don't like. Yeah, that. yeah. So, I, you, you you touched on McDaniel's, and we, we touched, you know, you touched a little bit about um, both well, actually both McDaniel's. So, outside of those two, what's the other buzzworthy topic going around right now on day one? Um, the Vikings GM had uh quite a few people there, and uh, just listening to how he compared his time on Wall Street to how he's approaching building the Vikings now was pretty interesting. And his main thing was uh, locking down Justin Jefferson long-term. Um, he's like, because when you have a talent like that, you can't just let him leave. So I like it. Yeah. I like it. They're, very, they're very committed to Justin Jefferson, as you expect they would be. Well, I hope you would. they would be. Uh, fantasy owners obviously really want that. Um, you know, buzzworthy stuff, you know, we're seeing a bunch of guys hop in, hop out and, you know, everybody wants to say the right thing. Uh, but you know, Philly obviously isn't committed to Miles Sanders. They're okay with him walking. Mm -hmm. Um, they've pretty much, you know, like, Hey, we're, we're looking very heavily into this draft class, very deep running back draft class. And we, we really like that. Uh, there's some big names at the top and, you know, and just, Seeing small things like that, you know, guys that are looking to make big moves. Uh, you know, obviously talking, John Schneider's been here 30 years, you know, and he just – that's one thing he brought up is this is 30th combine, you know, and he's like, you know, we've obviously got a lot of moving parts coming up and, you know, we've got pieces that we're looking at, but he talked about how they want to bring Geno back, so that's important, which makes mm-hmm. it really interesting that, you know, we got Mel Kuyper saying – Anthony Richardson is going to be going to Seattle when his GM is levying to bring his quarterback back right now. So I, that that's an interesting one. You know, obviously you never know what's going to happen with Kuiper. He's just, you know, spitting off his tools. <laughs> but it, it's just, I don't, know if that, I don't know if that was the right saying. Or it's it's Kuiper, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It, it's just one of those things, like, you want, you want people to be spicy yeah. and – 
you know, got to give it to the Dolphins head coach. He did not mess around. Obviously, the Poyer aspect was brought up, and we have a clip of that, you know, that we sent you guys, and he posted right away. And we, we you know, obviously, the, the best thing about it is we're able to send you guys, and you guys can do the magic because I all I'm going to record and send. So, <laughs> yeah, he also said he was okay with uh, Gesicki going out and talking to teams too, which yeah. I thought was. I mean, very, very uncommitted to Gusecki at this. I mean, you don't look at the top three market. Dude, don't block. He's one of the top tight ends in the league. Don't block. Can't can't block. He's a wet wet bag out there. Yeah. Um. So I I do know that Brave Wills has an interview with the Dolphins. So that's a guy who can block. That's a guy who can do everything. So <laughs> yeah. My 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 guys, I appreciate you taking time for us. KT, you got anything else you want to say to him? Uh, biggest expectations for day two. Uh, I would say, our, you know, obviously we've got a lot of possible interviews that we could do on day two. Um, I, I don't. I, I want to see fan experience compared to because it's the first year they're doing a fan experience. Oh, okay. okay. You know, so there's a bunch of stuff like that they can do with the combine drills. You know, and oh, all right. take pictures with certain stuff, and we know walk by some of that, and you know everything's within a walking distance. So I can tell you that we we walked everywhere today. Yeah. Um, you know, even to the convention center, and uh, I would say biggest expectations would be to maintain what we did today. To be honest with you, um, I feel like we put out pretty good content considering you know the room was so packed. Uh, let's shout out to Eric uh, Prompton from NBC Sports. Obviously, we have some really good talk with him about college okay. football fantasy, and uh, he loves calling you Nico for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, he's like, oh, Nico. And I'm like, it's neat. I don't want to keep correcting it, but I mean, I can work it up on time, you know. And, but he, he has some really good stuff that he's, he's, he's working on. And obviously, he wants us to, to partake in that. So, college fantasy football, I think we're all about. So, absolutely. I'm not really sure about this P2P in Colorado hat we got going on. I got to. <laughs> Uh, I knew there was something coming. I knew it was coming down the pipeline. <laughs> I love it. My guy. Even when he's not around, he's still giving me jabs. <laughs> I got to. I mean, you're supposed to be here. I mean, we had, we're sitting on your couch right now. Like, you should be sleeping right here. I'm, I'm still working, even though I'm not I, there. So It's your size, too. So I think it's 5'5". Five, five, so. Oh, yeah. oh, no, 5'6". I, I have to curl up a little bit. I'll be good. I'll be good. I put small bodies on it, apparently. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh man, I appreciate you guys. I really do. Um, I know you guys have been going at it all day. Um, you know, you, you, you had a little bit of time to yourself, but I I know it. You know, it, it's hectic. So I we try to brown like you. I mean, it's it's hard to do that, but yeah. I think I need like six Red Bulls to keep. It. Yeah, I, I, I will tell you this. I haven't had an energy drink today, so maybe that's maybe that's why I took a nap. That's maybe. definitely why you took a nap. Yeah, that's probably it, right? There. Yeah. He napped, that's for sure. Yeah. I, I, I was snoring for days, baby. I uh, I, once it gets locked in, though, the snoring goes away. So, you, you, yeah. you, you <laughs> <laughs> once again, guys, I appreciate you. KT, take it away. Hey, man. Uh, good luck with uh, day two. I can't wait for the content that you guys going to bring in for day two. As I always like to say, do something nice for somebody you normally wouldn't do. Always pay it for peace and love, peace and blessings. And for my guy, Bob Costas, one. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs>